Welcome everyone. Thank you for joining us for today's webinar titled Metrics That Matter for Field Service Executives. My name is Peter Kim from the Zinier team and joining me today is our speaker, Oscar Salazar. Now, without further ado, we will turn the time over to Oscar. Good morning um, or good afternoon, everybody. I'm Oscar Salazar. I'm the Vice President of Sales uh, for the Americas here at uh, Zinier. I appreciate you taking the time from your busy schedules and family and other commitments to join our webinar today. So as Peter mentioned, uh, we will be uh, talking about uh, field service metrics today and why they're important and how to choose the right ones for uh, your organization uh, and hopefully leverage them to meet uh, or exceed your operational and, and business objectives. So. Um, now, now, why would I, uh, being a VP of sales, uh, be talking to you about metrics? Well, the answer is fairly straightforward. Um, in my line of work, I'm fortunate to get to interact with hundreds of service people just like you. And since I've been in sales leadership roles for approximately 30 years, and, and I guess I'm uh, dating myself a little here. Um, KPIs and metrics as, and the metrics associated with, with the performance of my own job uh, are key to business tracking and allows to identify opportunities for improvement and make decisions at the right time to meet uh, our business objectives. So metrics have been a constant denominator in my career and as they keep uh, business objectives at the forefront of every decision making process, uh, we've been able to do so for most of the organizations that I've been involved in. And so, so uh, I'm hopeful that today during our webinar, I'll be able to uh, convey and relay some of those perspectives as they pertain to uh, field service uh, autom automation and optimization. So I know your time is very valuable. I, uh, I'll try to keep it very relevant and I'll ask you for your forgiveness ahead of time if, uh, if I make any if, if nafus in, in my delivery. So, um, you know, when I was thinking about metrics as they relate to field service automation and the overall industry, um, and before we get deeper into that topic, some of the context that came to mind as a framework, as a backdrop, uh, was around what was driving the projected field service industry growth in the coming years. Um, and so, I also thought about, well, what kind of opportunities and or challenges would be associated with that growth? And, uh, and most of those boil down to data. So um, the volume of data created, captured, and replicated every second of every minute keeps growing faster and faster instant data, small data, big data, real-time data, more data all the time, everywhere. And the impact of new technologies such AI, artificial intelligence, and you know the driven, uh, the data-driven economy uh, that's fueling the digital transformation, uh, that has been and will continue to be some of the drivers for that field service management and automation growth. And so to give you um, a bit of context, uh, the world's collective internet traffic reached an annual run rate of one zettabyte on September uh, of 2016. Now, as additional data points, uh, and I know most of you know this better than I ever will since, since you know, I had to look it up, but one zettabyte is um, a trillion gigabytes. And one hour of a Zoom meeting, like pretty much like this uh, webinar, uh, uses approximately half a gigabyte. And so on May of 2020, there was a report from the research uh, firm International Data uh, Corporation, IDC, one of several companies that keep track of uh, uh, data evolution in the world. 
estimated the global data sphere, which is, you know, it measures the, the, the amount of data crea created and consumed in the world each year, will grow from 33 zettabytes in 2018 to 175 zettabytes by 2025. And that's just four years from now. So now to give you a bit even of more context uh, on what that truly means, if we were able to store 135 zettabytes onto Blu-ray discs, remember those? Um, you know, like CDs, but bigger capacity, then you would have a stack that would get you to the moon 23 times. IoT alone is expected to create 90 zettabytes of data in 2025. And the projections may get even steeper since COVID-19 um, and the pandemic that we're all going through has contributed uh, to that growth because uh, you know, it has significantly increased the number of work from home uh, employees like most of us. And, um, and that population of individuals working from home uh, has abruptly changed the mix of data being created to a much richer set of data. And that's all according to IDC. So um, during the pandemic, I have seen personally firsthand, not only have, you know, with me and, and my wife and, and my kids and grandkids and, and, and their habits and my habits and how we watch online content, um, but also in the workspace, right? In the workplace where we have a much greater number of interactions like this one generating much richer data. And I, you know, in a single day, uh, right here at, at Xenia, we have many, many more Zoom meetings and other video, video type of interactions uh, that we never really did before. And we just met face to face, right? And so as a result of that, it is estimated that um, there will be 59 zettabytes of data created this year alone. And that compared to what it was just a couple of years ago is almost twice in history. So keeping pace with the rising volume right, of data, uh, two other challenges for field service organizations today are you know, the deployment of 5G and the corresponding influx of data from IoT and all the IoT connected devices. So new site workloads can, can generate thousands of data points uh, without the right systems in place, this data tends to sit static, uh, you know, hard to reach uh, or come by, even with the help of large data uh, science teams. So for many organizations, the initial challenge of not having enough uh, uh, and craving data have slowly evolved into a different set of challenges, including having too much of it. And, you know, uh, and to some, uh, you know, by some estimations, uh, by 2025, over 30% of that data generated uh, will be generated from real time, in real time. And so uh, the opportunity has evolved and is now more centered around what to do with that huge amount of data, uh, how to leverage uh, as close to real time as possible, and hopefully do so to derive value and insight and, and make informed and smart decisions to improve profitability and customer satisfaction and you know, customer retention rates. And, and you know, I, I, we feel that um, that can happen whether it happens with you know, human interaction or just leveraging, le leveraging artificial intelligence and, and machine learning. So you know, another factor that came to mind when I was thinking about all these things is that um, for field service automation and optimization, from a drivers of uh, growth perspective, uh, companies like Netflix and Uber uh, have, that have used technology to reshape our expectations on how 
uh, on how services should be delivered. Um, you know, even simple things like walking outside to hell a cap now seems archaic. You know, I still have fresh memories of uh, you know weekly and sometimes I'm afraid to say daily trips to the rent to rent VHS uh, movies at a blockbuster uh, store down the street and then driving back you know a day or two later uh, to that same store to to drop them up off in a, in a little window um, you know if the store was closed and so um, I also have vivid memories of you know my time in Boston I went to BU and um, you know, freezing hours walking outside, hailing a taxi uh, next to large snowy banks, right? And these things seem, like I said, archaic now, but, you know, they serve me as I'm sure it serves many of you uh, also as a very stark reminder of how quickly technology can uh, upend an industry, right? And, and in less than 15 years, if you look at the case of uh, Blockbuster, you know, they went from having over 9,000 locations in a single store to having one. And, you know, it was primarily because it couldn't compete with the speed and the convenience and, and the quality of the on-demand uh, streaming platforms also, such as Netflix, right? And, you know, the worldwide taxi and overall land in or near city transportation got completely transformed in a matter of a year or two with the advent of organizations like Uber, right? So the message here is that now the world has evolved uh, and due to all of these factors has acquired a different set of expectations when it comes to service as compared to what it was just a few years ago. And that change in expectations, along with the ma massive growth in, in data, uh, provides a great opportunity to service companies that can transform and position themselves to leverage that evolution uh, in their you know, individual addressable markets, uh, because those expectations have also morphed the service consumer behavior. And so, all of these elements, AI, IoT, the massification and evolution of the handheld devices. And I don't know about you guys, but I personally um, have become less and less prone to using my computer or, or my app, iPad or my laptop and more and more prone to getting things done with just my cell phone instead. And when you add that exponential growth of the global data sphere um, the change in that market expectation and how the service should be delivered has fueled the growth of field service automation markets in, in a much faster way uh, than many other similar uh, industries so field service growth now has a unique opportunity i mean field service has a unique opportunity because of that growth. And, you know, if you look at um, the positive impact uh, that that has had on services organizations now, is that they can benefit from that projected mar market growth in a way that was never before possible. You know, there has been and will continue to be an increase in demand for mobile you know, field workforce and field service operation improvements. And what we're seeing is that from a reduction of operational costs, from better control uh, over the workforce, uh, workforce uh, management and accessibility to customer inf information, the demand for customer-centric solutions has accelerated as well. Uh, and, and that created the need for you know, more advanced field service solutions worldwide. Uh, the number of field uh, uh, technicians and field resources is also set to increase rapidly over the uh, forecasted period between now and 2025. Uh, and, and for field service automation tools, um, now helping business to enhance that type of productivity of field technicians and field 
resources by incorporating very advanced algorithmic uh, scheduling and providing real-time data from any device, anywhere, anytime, that, that provides additional capabilities for those services organizations to leverage this exponential uh, upcoming growth for their advantage. So some of the market drivers, um, according to the Fortune Business Insights, this is a, uh, a report that they just came out with in September 2020, said that the global field service management market um, stood at $2.3 billion a year and a half ago, and it's projected to reach $7.27 billion by 2026. And that has a compound annual uh, growth rate of about 16% uh, during that period of time. And that is significantly greater than many of those other similar uh, industries. So, and some of the growth um, for some of those solutions uh, are, are being driven by real-time visibility in field operations and, and, and wanting to boost uh, growth based on that and the integration of the connected mobile workforce that I just told you about also aiding to that uh, market growth. So the adoption of cloud development um, of field service automation is also growing at a very uh, significant compounded annual growth rate uh, and and it helps businesses to manage information in a more you know, secure and, and efficient and re, you know remotely accessible and consolidated manner so in addition to this the installation cost of all these cloud deployments is comparatively uh, much lower than the convenient uh, than the conventional ways of, of of deployment so you know cloud deployment of field service automation solutions provide a much higher degree of data uh, security and, and dependability. So those things were going through my head when we were talking about these. And then I thought about, well, what about metrics? And um, then I thought about Edward uh, Deming. Uh, and I apologize because that picture came up a, a little blurry, if, if you see it blurry on your end. But um, to contrast with all of these evolution and you know, on future looking forecast. I thought I would take a few minutes to talk about uh, Dr. Uh, Deming. He was an American engineer, a professor, an author, and an incredible uh, management consultant. And then later, he specialized in mathematical physics and you know, he helped develop the uh, sampling techniques that are still used today in the US for the Department of, uh, of the Census and the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I mean, this guy was born in 1900, uh, in the year 1900, and he published hundreds of papers, right? from statistical variances to, to, to systems and system thinking, to human psychology. You know, his efforts transformed management in a very profound and impactful way, uh, but more importantly, it transformed service organizations. Uh, and he's considered by many to be the master of continual improvement of quality in the services industry. So when people use the phrase, you can't manage or improve what you can measure, they attribute it to, to Deming. Some people feel that uh, Mr. Peter Drucker, uh, also an American management guru, was the one that came up with it. But regardless of who was the one that came with it, what they both stressed uh, time and again was the importance of using data to confirm beliefs that you know, could be used uh, uh, for management strategies and practices and, and to define which ones were working and which ones were not working so well. Now, you know, <laughs> um, my late grandmother would probably disagree with some of this because I saw her consistently make delicious meals and, and granted I, I may be biased, but she never really measured anything or follow any cooking recipes. And so I, I you know, um, I digress here, but go, going back to Deming and Drucker, they both believe in the value of using data to help improve management uh, and the management of, uh, management of an organization. So they also knew that just measuring things uh, and looking at data wasn't enough. 
using data to evaluate what was working and what wasn't uh, is what they thought was very valuable for uh, as a management practice for the enterprise. And, and, you know, interestingly enough, it is still a practice that is used far too little, too little today, even though it is used much more than when these two gentlemen were actively and, and, and alive. So um, why then metrics matter? And I was going to take time to get deeper into this and discuss, and discuss it. Um, but then I thought that you are all attending this webinar and you most probably already know that better than I do. Um, so I, you know, I keep trying to convince you of it and I assume that you all do. And then, so I'll go briefly on uh, why metrics matter just to make sure that I'm aligned with, with your perspective. And, and you know, if you, if you dif differ in some of these, I'd love to hear uh, your questions and we can answer them at the end of the webinar. So in general terms, uh, you know, this is, Pretty much to me an obvious statement but in many cases it needs to be stated right why do you want to drive your business with metrics uh, well uh, metrics are more than just numbers you report on a weekly basis they enable you to understand the performance and the health of your business so that you can make critical adjustments in time um, in your execution to achieve your strategic uh, goals and objectives from an ROI perspective is one of the most efficient and effective ways to optimize um, any operation and deliver exceptional value to your customers. Metrics will help you achieve the desired positive outcomes faster. And so from also in certain areas of service, uh, you know, when you look at it from a preventive versus predictive maintenance perspective, real-time understanding of your operations to add visibility to, um, uh, to the forecast uh, accuracy and to improve operational efficiencies and, um, and profitability, metrics are key in field service. And so uh, there are a lot of metrics in the world of field service uh, and and uh, at a time when organizations are based um, uh, and, and, and being asked to do more uh, with less, the inability to turn critical data into increased operational efficiency, uh, we feel is a, is a missed opportunity. So like we were saying at the beginning, service keeps us in a daily rhythm. Uh, at the beginning, you know, and, and overall in our lives, especially considering that over a third of the GDP in the US and the US economy is currently driven by service. Uh, but behind each service call, behind each service process and the technology, um, there is a, a significant number of a complex ecosystem of people and the process and the technology over you know 20 years of field service industry has gone uh has undergone through a period of extremely rapid growth and innovation and it's gotten all of this much more uh, complex so in the in the growing world of of field service optimization and automation it can be challenging knowing what data to chase, right? What metrics to make uh, the North Star and whether or not a company is heading in the right direction. And, and so how do we navigate uh, through the complexities of you know, wading through the challenges of measurable data to hone in on the metrics that, that your company should be focusing on to drive growth, increase you know, customer satisfaction and, and, and boost top line revenue. Um, how can you ensure that field service and the metrics that's associated with it positively impact uh, your enterprise. Some of those questions and concerns uh, I hear very often and, and they revolve around, you know, do we have the right parts in, st in stock? Uh, how long will this job take? Does the field resource or technician have enough capacity to complete the job? 
who's available for that job is, is you know is the uh, job site the correct one the correct one uh, how far from the job site is the technician and can he get there on time to to maintain customer satisfaction you know how do we load balance uh, those workloads so when we begin to explore possible field service KPIs to measure we quickly find that there is a very long list of metrics to consider you know average response time mean time to service mean time to repair mean time to complete so on and so forth and there are many many of them and the list goes on and on so you know if we were to look at the field service value uh, chain uh, there are multiple parts of the field service value chains from an order management to scheduling to execution to reporting many things that you can track uh, how do you ensure that you're collecting the right metrics that will serve uh, your organization's uh, growth and objectives uh, growth objectives and so the problem arises because companies typically take a silo approach to reviewing that data for example a front, you know, a front light manager uh, may check overtime data of uh, the uh, or dispatching from, and the dispatch uh, people will look at, you know, the dispatching group reviews, payroll data, and the fleet team reviews the GPS data. Everybody's looking at those data in a separate manner, and there is not a holistic uh, view that allows them to have an organizationally wide. Um, you know, visibility to, to that data and make joint decisions as to what's best for the enterprise. Uh, those siloed systems make it hard for, manage, uh, for managers to, to stitch all those data points together uh, from all those different uh, sources to form a complete view of the root cause of a performance challenge, right? Um, for example, what's in progress? How is it going? How efficient? is it what is what are the opportunities to do better for customers and improve your product or service focus on focusing on um, on the execution piece once the resources are on site for example you know you, you could ask yourself well what in pro what does in process uh, truly mean uh, there is a lack of real-time visibility is what I'm saying here, right? There, there are often disparate systems in which uh, or by which people report, uh, making it very hard to analyze where the opportunities for improvements may lie. Now, so what, what, matter, what priorities matter to you? Uh, there's a good reason for this complexity in field service and field service metrics. Because running a field service uh, operation is a compla complex uh, task. Many moving parts interact uh, with each other and affect each other. And while many uh, or all of these KPIs could be helpful in measuring your field service uh, performance, what you really want to know is which ones um, are going to give you the best information and impact your business the most. So. Um, increasing service margins, increasing the capacity for new customers at a lower operational cost, and increasing customer satisfaction uh, rates, th that to us uh, go back to three main buckets of, or foundational uh, pillars of uh, metrics value. One is service efficiency. You know, the efficiency of a service being provided in the field is often, you know, is often one of the first things that people think about when evaluating uh, service operations. Uh, customer satisfaction, to me, that equates to risk and risk mitigation. Equally important in, in measuring how well you're performing uh, your services. And, you know, and that is truly, ultimately, the best measuring stick, which would be your customer satisfaction rate. And then business performance, you know, after all, uh, we're running a business and it's also essential to include measures of business performance in, in our field service uh, KPIs. So, um,
Another great approach to test if the metrics are uh, are focusing on, on the relevant relevant uh, KPS for your business, uh, you know, is the following: Do they match your business goals? The best way to ensure that your field service metrics are pertinent and aligned uh, is to match them directly with your business goals and objective. Um, if you look at um, the data and you are unable to act on it, then, then that may not necessarily be a service metrics that we want to focus on, right? Uh, you want to make sure that your field service metrics focus on things that can do something that you can do something about and, and that you can, and then I'm, I'm focus on, on uh, allowing you to make decisions to improve your operations and, and the way you do business. And the last one is, you know, do you, do you have, or can you get access to the data? You know, a good example would be CSAT statistics that we've been talking about. Uh, and you know those numbers are very important, but if you don't have access uh, to some way of asking your customers about their satisfaction rate, then capturing the response uh, and capturing the response, then then that measure uh, means you know uh, you know it means it's not going to it's not going to be um, uh, it's going to be challenging for you to be able then to use that metrics on an ongoing basis and and get insights out of it. Right? You got to be you got to be able to get uh, access to it. Uh, you want to focus them on the people, and you want those to be fully aligned with your corporate goals and objectives. All right. So, from a high level uh, overview, diving into each one of the buckets, uh, we're going to. Uh, go deeper into each one of these four pillars as well from a field service metrics and then we're going to discuss them um, on, uh, on a more dismembered kind of way. The first one is safety. You know, the, the world of field service can be filled with dangerous stuff. Uh, climbing ladders and you know, using power tools, getting close or having to deal with electrical equipment, heavy machinery, all have the potential to cause injury. Uh, and there is no shortage of injuries in the field service world, um, specifically also in the, in the construction space, you know, contributing to more than $62 billion in loss of productivity every single year. And so in addition to the hazards that inherently this field has for workers, there are risks to customers as well. And you know, an improperly installed electrical system can, can, can potentially cost a fire. There could potentially be causes, cost for electrocution or even death and you know, collapsing roofs and falling fans, improperly constructed uh, walls all have the potential to cause serious injury. And in some field service industries, the risk can be even bigger, right? Such as the field service companies responsible for medical device repairs, right? And I, you know, I'm a biomedical engineer and, and I worked in that field for the better part of about 13 years. So, uh, you know, disputes between contractors and, and customers uh, uh, cause both parties. Uh, thousands of hours and millions of dollars each year, right? Contractors struggle to maintain a, a good reputation while customers are afraid of, of being cheated, right? Uh, at legal liability and regulatory uh, bodies to this mix, and you end up with a recipe for headaches, distrust, and serious damage. So by providing specific workflows, uh, detailed documentation, and making it simple to share that information, at the right time with the field service uh, uh, resources, field service management relieves, relieves some of that pain for both the uh, businesses as well as the customers uh, alike, right? And, and you know, from a management uh, commitment perspective, messaging 
uh, and safety culture. This is a, perhaps a more obscure, uh, but incredibly important component of any safety program. Management must be effective and consistently uh, be able to deliver a clear message to their employees. Safety is number one. And that is key in order to build a solid uh, culture of safety within the workforce and prevent injuries uh, and accidents. But it is not enough just to say it, right? The employees must see a consistent commitment to this goal from all layers of management. You gotta be talking the same language uh, across the entire stack. And this management commitment must be, uh, must, must include, must, uh, must include uh, you know, dedicating the proper amount of time and the resources and the funding to ensure that their workers are properly trained, uh, given appropriate, you know, PPE equipment, et cetera. And so that accountability is, um, is key. Quality. Customers are demanding more because new technologies, like we were saying earlier, enable them to get more from the service providers and expect a superior quality of service. And that uh, is evolving today as one of the primary differentiators across all field service uh, platform. So quality uh, is key. And if, you, if the organization wants to remain relevant, uh, it needs to make sure that it's providing the utmost level of quality when it comes to uh, service. Now, uh, productivity, and despite you know the desire to uh, shift towards a more proactive based operating mo model, the, the their daily workflow of field service teams is still uh, inefficient. Uh, and so many, many organizations are still using you know pen and paper, sticky notes, Excel spreadsheets, phone calls. Uh, and so as field service um, shift, um, to uh, a workflow or task-centric type of uh, methodologies, I think that there is a significant opportunity to improve productivity, uh, and that can be measured in terms of um, tangible KPIs, you know, mean times to repair, you know, uh, technicians' productivity. Those are metrics that directly, umbilically link uh, their bottom line, right? Uh, their profitability. Uh, customer service. And you know, as field service organizations shift from a reactive to a more proactive uh, service model, there is a pressing customer demand for improved service. Uh, you know, turnover rate, you know, is a uh, old faithful uh, profession of the metrics as uh, turnover rate or terminations divided by headcount and multiplied by 100. You know, give the human resources teams a, a good overall bird's eye type of view of who's staying and who's learning. And, and, and even to it, today, CEOs still rank as one of, uh, of the data points they care um, most of, uh, about. And so turnover is a huge indicator of how well a company is doing and uh, you know retaining and improving uh, the staff and and the employee overall experience quality. There's a lot of competition in business these days, and companies have to sell themselves just as much as candidates do. So so you know the CEO of Golry, I think his name is uh, Ethan Todd. Uh, he he focuses primarily on turnover to measure. His, uh, his organization's uh, ability to stay competitive. Turnover might also be one of the most public facing metrics, right? As departing employees won't hesitate much to spill the beans on glass door and, and, and blind. So while leaders are interested in company-wide turnover, they say they always want to know the context behind the metrics. And so there is, for example, Michaela Kiner, is uh, Michaela is the CEO of Reverb. I uh, spent over 15 years working in human resources. Uh, so she sat on both sides of the 
boardroom table. She spent time looking at turnover by department, demographic, uh, performance rating, understanding what seemingly high performance, I mean, high turnover uh, rates doesn't tell the whole story. They want to know what's behind that metric. And so she stated, I worked with one team that had a significant amount of attrition. People were leaving. But when they analyzed it further, the results were interesting. First, they broke out external versus internal attrition. That is people leaving the company versus those departing for other teams. Most of the attrition was internal. And so imagine what impact that bit of understanding of the data behind that metrics represents to the decision-making processes for somebody like Michaela, right? Very different to think that you have a significant rate of attrition leaving, uh, uh, of employees leaving your organization versus they moving internally within it. So Todd uh, agreed with the uh, importance of, of context, right? It is not uh, to point the finger, but just to ensure that the recruiting team and team managers get the support that they need. The uh, second is the engagement scores and you know the EMPS. While both polls and engagement surveys capture employee sentiment in, in any moment uh, in time, they also are valuable for forecasting engagement uh, consistently uh, ranks as the most reliable predictor of turnover, right? How engaged are your employees? Given that the cost of losing an employee can cost twice their salary, usually uh, a bit more, it's no surprising that a lot of the leaders and the CEOs found value in that metric, right? So ultimately, um, we focus on the bottom line. That's what I take a keen interest in employee engagements and just and job satisfaction. These are this is a, a quote from Alex William, the CEO of Hosting Data. He also said, "I definitely want to retain good staff with strong skill sets because I don't want to spend more money on recruiting." Right. So according to uh, Kiner, the notion that CEOs are different towards engagement is not necessarily an accurate one. They want more engagement data, not less. One risk is to look at too many lagging metrics, right? That is focusing only on things that happen already. More progressive HR leaders also examine, examine uh, leading indicators to, to use it as a predictive uh, measure. What can signal potential attrition before it happens so they can take the proper uh, steps to prevent it? And um, that may be a lack of engagement. And that was another statement that, that she made. So which metrics do you currently track? Which metrics matter most to you? Well. Um, I would ask which one of these uh, you measure. Uh, how satisfied are you with these metrics? Do you align with your company's vision and their you know, primary imperatives? Uh, are they measurable and actionable? Are they centered around your own people? So, you know, I, I'd love to get a, a Zoom poll and, and take a, a, a holistic view as to what's in, in, important to you all. but. From a service quality perspective, I would say, you know, SLA uptime, uh, SLA response time, first time fix rates uh, over the total number of truck roll, rolls, uh, and, you know, what work backlog percentages do you have? Those are things that from a service quality perspective would come uh, to mind and be, uh, you know, of, a, of a most uh, importance. From a productivity point of view, how well are you utilizing your technicians? Uh, so resource utilization is key. Now, how many tasks per technicians per day? Uh, how long does it take them? What's the range time, right? How long does it uh, take 
uh, to that uh, for them to get from from site one to site two so the drive time and the mean time to resolution how long is it taking them to resolve a matter to the customer satisfaction from an operating uh, margin perspective you know dispatcher to tech ratio sometimes we've seen organizations that have a significantly larger ratio than than the rest of uh, best practice or the rest of the uh, industry the travel spent how long how much is it costing to get from point a to point b that usually translate into you know fleet mileage and the cost associated with that and lastly the percentage of service calls scheduled uh, automatically those all those things come to mind when we're thinking about uh, operating uh, margins so, so 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 what right um well, ultimately, we know why we need to improve safety, quality, productivity, and customer uh, customer service. Uh, safety, because it protects the well-being of employees, visitors, and customers. Uh, looking after health and safety uh, makes good, solid business case. I mean, business sense. Um, workplaces which neglect health and safety, they usually a risk prosecution and those prosecutions can be um, very costly and you know they may lose staff and may increase cost and reduce profitability in a significant material manner you know quality well you know it usually helps identify gaps in job training and skills uh, productivity they reduce cost and increase top line revenue uh, customer service they improve customer relations, improve customer brand recognition, uh, addresses any uh, problems and sometimes predictively do so in problem areas, improve the experience of the customers, uh, and by doing so, in increase the overall retention rate, and monitor the, the, the loyalty trends, and grow revenue through referrals and upsell. And in service, it's difficult to impact top line most of the improvements uh, end up helping profitability by improving operational efficiencies. So because it results in these important things uh, that you care the most about uh, as individuals, as contributors and executives, you know, there are three things, top line, you know, bottom line, and mitigating risk, which translates into um, into customer satisfaction and retention rates. All right, so um, Deloitte uh, Insights came up with this uh, augmenting the field service worker um, article. And in it, it said that every day, approximately 20 million field service workers are spread across the world every single day 20 million and they are interacting closely with an organization's most important asset which is its customers and its products yet most of what happens at that critical interface is disconnected from the core business even with the last the uh, even with the greatest and latest field service automation software and the Internet of Things sensor systems, management still often operates without a clear line of sight into how do we improve financial and customer results because key situational data remains in the heads of the individual field worker. And so with each service call, companies can lose valuable information. So how do you break that? data silo even if you chase the right metrics nothing can happen if you do not uh, act on them while having a platform that can derive automated insights certainly can help operations tremendously it is critical that amassing data will amount to um, you know nothing until you understand the metrics and then immediately act on it as close to real time as possible 
So um, key, key takeaways, uh, we understand that as field service executives, you want to increase service margins, uh, increase the capacity of new customers at a lower operational overall cost and increase your customer satisfaction and therefore retention rates. Uh, field service metrics should be focused on data that is measurable uh, and actionable, that your people um, uh, and, that, uh, and, that, and that that aligns with your overall customer in, uh, company imper imperatives and the goals and objectives that metrics that define your success um, are usually focused on safety, quality, productivity, and customer service. Uh, and that in order to break the data silos, you have to leverage the data that you currently have and take a performance-centric approach. And the last one is that from an identity perspective, you need to um, identify what it is that, that you want to measure from a KPI perspective, measure it, then evaluate it, and then iterate it. And to me, that would be, uh, if we can remember nothing but this, the key uh, takeaways from, from the webinar today. So thank you so much for having uh, spent this time with us. Um, if there are any questions, I'll be happy to, to answer them.